Last night they started out by saying we're not going to talk about something else in politics, and well, I'm going to talk about politics. So let's go. So Tuesday was the end of the midterm elections, and I'm going to challenge you to raise your hand if you did not vote. Any, anyone? That's what I thought it was going to be. So congratulations. You are a statistically amazing audience. Because on average, half of the United States does not participate. In the 2016 general elections, 44% of eligible voters did not cast a ballot. That's 125 million, 473,040 eligible voters. In 2016, I was part of that number. I know. At the time, I was an assistant resident director at Montana State University, helping manage a building of 300 freshmen in the thick of my senior thesis and preparing to go to India. The hoops I had to jump through to request an absentee ballot from Idaho were no longer hoops. They were roadblocks. I was not the only potential voter who felt the woes of the absentee ballot system. At least two of my friends requested ballots from Idaho and Montana and did not receive them. In my opinion, that is two ballots too many and a sign that something needs to change. So why am I, a graphic designer, talking to all of you about voting and elections? Well, one, it is really important. And two, I am a voter who has experienced the shortcomings of our election system firsthand. Something needs to change. Now, I work under the pretense that roadblocks only exist because someone has not figured out how to use them. I also am very stubborn and work under the pretense that I'm not about to let a roadblock stand in my way of helping solve an issue that affects millions of people. And I think quite differently than the people who have designed the current system we have in place. My job as a graphic designer is to look at the user experience and identify how it can be improved. So tonight, I'm gonna talk about my solution, an app called Apps and Tea that informs and engages the millennial demographic. In an interview, Ted Peterson, the digital director of the Republican Congressional Committee stated that a winning campaign in the future will be one that identifies the right audience on the right medium and provides creative messaging that is personal to the voter and unique to the environment. Voter behaviors are changing. TV marketing is on the decline, and mobile, eng mobile engagement is in. So what better way to capture a millennial audience than an app? This demographic, on average, spends 2.9 hours daily on apps and 5.5 hours on digital media. So. <laughs> Uh, why the millennial demographic? Well, it's because they need it more than any other age group. This chart shows that, on average, voter participation increases with age. You'll see that 18 to 39 saw participation rates lower than the national average of 56%. So this is the app. Uh, the app identifies the right audience on the right medium and provides creative messaging that is personal to the voter and unique to the environment. From the app, users can take an alignment quiz, research candidates and ballot issues, and even cast a ballot. It all starts with a political alignment survey. Users answer this survey and are uh, matched with candidates that most align with their views, and they have projected ballot stances as well. Because more education equals a more informed opinion, this quiz can be taken as many times as the user likes. Now, I don't need research to tell me millennials have a short attention span. My brain is one of a squirrel. <laughs> the research screen neatly bundles all the information of nationwide, statewide, countywide, and citywide elections in one easy to navigate spot. Now, in any aspect of design, color matters. The blue and red that you see are not the traditional shades that are associated with American politics. There is a reason. Color evokes emotion, and it also evokes bias. In order to ease any tensions between that bias, they're used in equal proportion. Now this is my favorite part, and potentially the most exciting part about this app, is voting from it. 
but it comes with a surprising challenge, ballot design. There is no federal standard of ballot design, and that blows my mind. Because there are no best practices, we get ballots like the Palm Beach County ballot. Yeah, in my opinion, this is not bad design. This is exceptionally bad design. And it doesn't just stop here. In New York, rows are denoted, denoted with a clenched fist and pointer finger, and that is written into the law. Yeah, <laughs> the absentee ballot utilizes the best practices determined by civicdesign.org, such as, but not limited to, one voting item per screen, clearly denoted as selection with a distinct icon and a highlighted color, and using as little text as legally possible. Lost my spot. All right, <laughs> voting from the app would allow people to mark one more reason as to why they don't vote off their list. Accessibility. Voting should not be a burden. And if you enjoy a certain socioeconomic lifestyle, it often isn't. No eligible voter should be prevented due to cost, language barrier, or disability. And while an app isn't for everyone, it's a good solution for many. And if voting is our civic duty, we owe it to ourselves to have a better process. Absentee is one of the many solutions there are to fixing this process and engaging potential voters. But right now, it is just speculative design. The work for the 2020 election started as soon as the polls closed on Tuesday. And there is a lot of work to be done. And hopefully, absentee will be up and running in 729 days. But in the meantime, I challenge you to be an engaged, informed, and an empowered voter. Thank you for listening. <laughs>